فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وعين الشرح في كتاب الفرائد البهية في نظم قواعد الفقهية written by Abu Bakr ibn Abi Al-Qasim Al-Ahdal رحمه الله تعالى we stopped at the third line where the author says علمنا سبحانه بالقلم فضلا ومنا منه ما لم نعلمي so we're going to start from this inshallah ta'ala line and explain it in Allah al-Kareem the author said علمنا سبحانه بالقلم علمنا the word alamana, we already took this form when we were speaking about faqahana, nabahana. It comes in the form of according to the scholars of morphology, the sarfiyin, which is the sigha or the wazn of fa'ala. And we said that fa'ala has in it the meaning of graduation, when something is done gradually, which is a tadrij. That means things happen not suddenly or all at once, uh, but basically that it happens over a period of time. And that is what's taken from this form, uh, from uh, morphological uh, pattern, which is fa'ala. And as I want you to all realize, which is the qa'ida according to the ulama, whether it be in the sarfiyin, the scholars of morphology, or whether it be the scholars of grammar, is that if a word has uh, more structure, meaning more letters in it, it has to have more meaning in it. Does it make sense? Ghaliban, that's the majority of the times. So if fa'ala has four letters, how has he got four letters? We've got fa, and we have two ayn, and we have a lam. Because the ayn has a shadda on it. Shadda is this, it means two of of it. So we have four letters. So fa'ala cannot be the same as fa'ala. They can't both be the same in meaning because there's an extra ayn here. So that extra ayn has to indicate an extra meaning. So this is where the extra meaning comes in, which is that it is a tadrij, that it's gradual. You see? Whereas if you just said, uh, if you said, ala, al, uh, if you said, alima, means he learned. You see, huh? but when you've added that shadda on it, um, it means that we were we took knowledge and we learnt, but it was something that was given to us gradually, and that is the reality of what the Quran indicates as well, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la taalamuna shay'a." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He brought you out of the wombs of your mothers not knowing anything. So the teaching and us learning and acquiring things had occurred as time went on. So uh, linguists, they say that the child, when he's young, whatever he's, uh, whatever he's taking in is called acquiring. Whereas when he grows older, it is more called learning. So the person is learning. So here what we can say, alamana is acquiring when you're young because learning involves, huh? Learning involves pondering and thinking, whereas acquiring doesn't have anything to do with pondering and thinking and contemplating. The child doesn't contemplate on what his parents have said, but he just naturally learns it by listening, uh, uh, by just listening. And this is the theory of behaviorism, as they call it, that the child just learns it without, uh, by just listening. And he learns it from the individual who's native, and it's his language, or the person who knows this particular field. So this qa'ida is not muttarid. It is not a qa'ida that always applies. So sometimes there may be a word you might see. It might have more structure. It might have more letters to it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, it's, that it has uh, more meaning in it. Or it has a different meaning to the one that has lesser structure in it. It's not, it's not always the case. 
Allamana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He taught us, He educated us. He took us out of the realm of ignorance and brought us into the light of knowledge. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of that took place in what? It all took place gradually over a period of time. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the question arises, brothers, is that, and the scholars deal with this issue, especially the ulama of mantiq, logic. And this is the issue of, does everything a person do, does it always have to have the consequences of it? Does it always have to come out of it? And this is the issue called al-mutawa in Arabic, which is that allamana Allah taught us. Does it necessarily mean that it has to happen that we learn? Because Allah taught us subhanahu wa ta'ala, does there have to come what is known as mutawa? They deal with this. And the issue of Allah ta'ala teaching us or educating us or subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a verb yatarattabu. Uh, it's not a verb that happens by what is known as al mutawa'atul lazima. It doesn't necessarily have to happen. It doesn't necessarily have to happen. For We see people who've learned and become understanding. And then we see those who don't know and don't have understanding. Maybe because they have disability issues. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah created them like that, that they are unable to ever learn. You see? So, mutawa'a doesn't necessarily have to take place. Whereas if you say, kasartu zajaja, I broke the glass, fan kasarat, and it broke, this is no doubt a mutawa'a, lazima. I, broke, I, I hit the glass and the glass broke. So the glass will break. It will break. Whereas knowledge, Allah may teach us subhanahu wa ta'ala, but people may not take it in and may not learn it. So they call this a, 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 not a, a action that may happen and it may occur, the consequences of it, huh? or may not have. So this happens. So, Allamana Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He taught us, He educated us. He, Allamana, Subhanahu. So we have Allamana and Allah tabaraka. Subhanahu. Subhanahu is a masdar, is a verbal noun. Masdar mulazim linnasbi. It is a it is a verbal noun and it is always with a nasb. You see? And the nasb is always from maf'ulul mutlaq, meaning subhanah, you will never find it except in a uh, except in this form which is al maf'uliyat al mutlaqah. That is always a maf'ul mutlaq. It's always how it comes. The amil, the amil, the thing that made it into this form, or al made it, then the amil is what causes it, the cause of it to become a maf'ul al mutlaq is hidden. You see, if it's a maf'ul, then, then it always has to be what? <laughs> There always has to be a verb that, take, that took place, right? So where is the verb? Because that's what causes it. The verb here is mahdhuf, and you have to conceal it. It's obligatory that you conceal it, according to the grammarians. And it is what? Akhussu, I specify Allah, subhanah. Akhussuhu subhanah. So what's hidden here is akhussu. I specify, I single him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I uniquely pronounce and utter for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What? Subhanah means what? It means unazihu. Unazihu jalla wa ala amma la yaliqu bihi min sifati min sifati naqsi wal aib. It is to to exalt Allah tabarak wa ta'ala from characteristics and attributes that have deficiency in it. You don't attribute to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, rather you exalt him from it. And you uh, those characteristics and those attributes you you exalt him from it, subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. Allamana <coughs> subhanahu, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he taught us with what? Bil qalami. The ba in bil qalami. The ba in there is called ba us sababiya. Sababiya means what? Reason. It means through. This pen, Allah taught us, educated us through the pen. The reason in how Allah educated, or the way in which Allah did it, is through the pen. You see, the pen here, it means kitabah, it means writing. The pen doesn't, a pen, you don't learn from a pen. 
But what you learn from is what the pen does, which is the writing. That is what's meant by it. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said in Surah Al-Alaq, Ayah 4, الذي علم بالقلم the one who taught with the pen that's where the shaykh is bringing it from it doesn't mean Allah taught us the, the pen taught us but means that the pen through it Allah taught us subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pen wrote and through the writing of the pen we learnt أي بسبب الكتابة الكتابة التي سببها القلم we learnt through the writing of the pen in other words, now we have to understand that Allah is the one who taught us and educated us. But what did Allah use? Allah Taala used the pen. And how did the pen then teach us? It taught us by its writing. So Allah Taala He mentions that in the Quran, and that's where the author gets it from, which is الذي علم بالقلم. So a pen by itself, if you put it somewhere, it won't be able to to write. صح? Place a pen in front of you. It won't, teach, it won't benefit you and nobody you take anything from it nobody even write <coughs> but when will it benefit you when will you learn from the pen and when will it when the writing comes into place so the pen by itself mujarradul qalam a pen by itself isn't uh, isn't what gives you the, the outcome that you're looking for so um, subhanah Allah wa ta'ala the exalted he taught us bil qalami with the pen with the pen. Fadlan wa mannan. Fadlan wa mannan. Fadlan means a karuman wa ihsanan. Out of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's virtue. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He taught us with the pen out of His virtue, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's fadl from Him. It's a virtue from Him. It's a virtue from Him. Wa mannan, and it is a blessing from Him. So they are slightly close in meaning. Mutaqaribani fil ma'na. The word fadlan wa mannan are close to each other in terms of meaning. So the word fadl in the Arabic language originally means getting more than what you deserve. Are you with me? Or getting more is what fadl means. And blessing is, is also the same, right? Blessing is also getting more. So there's, that's how the relationship of the two, or that's the relationship between the two of them. So fadlan, out of his virtue, wa mannan, and out of his favor and blessing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min hu, from him. So min means from, and the ha is a pronoun. It's a, a pronoun. Ya'udu ala Allah azza wa jalla, and he goes back to Allah wa ta'ala. So he is the one who, who has placed his virtue, this favor, and this blessing onto us. It is him. So the min hu, that ha, that damir, you take it back to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Ma lam na'lami. He taught us what? Ma lam na'lami. The word ma here is an isim mawsul. In other words, it's like a ladhi lam na'lami. The ma here is an ism mawsul. And remember we took that the ma can come in many meanings, correct? And from the meanings that it comes with was that it can be an ism mawsula. It can be a ism mawsula, which is a levi. So ma lam na'lami, it means the, the thing that we didn't know. So a levi, the thing. It's an ism mawsula. Um, so what's the i'rab for it? Ma lam na'lami. What's the i'rab for the word ma? The i'rab for it, it is what? It is a maf'ulun bih. It's an object. It is. It's an object. Ma lam na'lami. Ma lam na'lami. Um, <coughs> so what did he teach us subhanahu wa ta'ala? That which we did not know. That which we had no knowledge of, that which we did not know. So, <clears throat> if ma is a maf'ulun bih, what maf'ulun bih is it? Because remember, the Arabic language, the word ilm, is a, the word ilm here right now, allama, we have, are you with me? It takes what is not, it's a fi'l muta'addi, yata'adda ila maf'ulain. It is a verb, that 
that takes two objects. It doesn't take one object. Two objects. Are you with me? It goes towards two. So where is the... So first of all, this ma is the second maf'ul. So where is the first maf'ul? Where is the first maf'ul? You see? <coughs> the first maf'ul is the noon in allamana. The noon in allamana subhanahu bil qalami. The noon in allamana is the first maf'ul. So we have our first maf'ul which is allamana. And we also have our second one which is allamana subhanahu bil qalami fadlan wa mannan. The ma here is the second maf'ul. It is the second maf'ul. Allah wa ta'ala, he taught us what? Ma lam na'lami, that which we did not know. Allah wa ta'ala. What is it that we didn't know? We didn't know the Qur'an. We didn't know the sciences pertaining to the Qur'an. We didn't even also know the jurisprudent rulings in the religion. What is permissible and what is not permissible. All of that we did not know. And Allah wa ta'ala, out of his favor and his virtue unto us, he had allowed us to, uh, to know. So he taught us that which we didn't know. We didn't know the Quran. We didn't know the sciences pertaining to the Quran or even the, the sunnah. We didn't know it. We didn't know the rulings that were taken from both of them. So this here, my beloved brothers and sisters, is i'tiraf bin ni'mah. It is us acknowledging the blessings of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. This is what the author is teaching us, that we acknowledge that Allah bestowed favors upon us and that he has blessed us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the blessing here is what? Ni'matul ilm, the blessing of knowledge. And wallahi, what is better than an ya'tarifa talibul ilmi that the student of knowledge acknowledges Sabaha wa masa in the morning and in the evening, that the student of knowledge acknowledges this blessing and that he's not stubborn and hard headed to not acknowledge it. That Allah blessed him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this of the author here uh, saying that, uh, saying this, it is an iqtibas, it is taken from the authentic hadith and the famous hadith that we all know, which is in Sahih Hain min hadithi. Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Amma radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma but the Prophet said man yuridi allahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi deen anybody who Allah wants good for them Allah gives them understanding of this religion so if Allah wants good for you a sign that Allah wants good for you it is what? it's that he gives you he gives you understanding of this religion so can one say, because, are you with me brothers? This is very important. May yuridillahu bihi khayran. Anyone who Allah wants for them, good. So the sign and the way to know that a person is favored and a person has received the blessings of Allah is the fact that, the fact that they have, they have knowledge being given to them. They possess knowledge. This khayriya that's been mentioned in this hadith, it's above the foundation that's already there, which is Islam. And that's already a khayr, no doubt. He's a muwahid, he's a worshipper of Allah alone. So that itself is a is khayr. Are you with me, brothers? Isn't that the case? Isn't that the case? That is the case. But the khayr that's been referred to here is expanded on in the part where the Prophet said, May yuridillahu bi khayran. A khayran azeeman. Because it's nakira. Because it's a nakira, it's an indefinite. On the before it is what? Shart, shartiya, mani shartiya. To feed the you feed the umum. It shows generalization. And then, if the person wants ha great knowledge, uh, virtue and great blessings and khair from Allah Tabarak wa Taala, so then tanwinu, it is lit taqdim. And this ha hadith, the way we've taken a ruling from it by its direct approach, we can also take from it 
a ruling from its reverse understanding, which is known as what? Al-Mafhum. Its reverse understanding, which is that if Allah does not want good for you, He doesn't give you the understanding of the religion. So if we turn the hadith, we can say, مَنْ لَمْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا لَا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ If Allah does not want good for a person, He doesn't give him the understanding of this religion. And this reverse understanding was touched on by uh, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala and Allamat ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions it in his kitab, Miftah al Sa'ada. And uh, Ibn Hajar mentions it in his kitab, uh, Fath al-Bari, which is a sharh of uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. But as I said, because we're going to strip khayr from this person, what khayr are we referring to here? We're referring to the khayr that is above uh, above the tawheed and the basics of the religion that, he's already, that he already has. So it is not that we're stripping from him all types of khayr. عَلَّمَنَا سُبْحَانَهُ بِالْقَالَمِ فَضْلًا وَمَنًّا مِنْهُ مَا لَمْ نَعْلَمِي The shaykh then goes on to say in 